here's the thing on piston ring end gap. The general consensus seems to be that there is no general consensus. There's basically a range and everybody kind of has their own range of what they're comfortable with. But if you're naturally aspirated, if you're running boost, how much boost are you running? What kind of power adder are you running? Is it blown? Is it nitrous? I scoured the internet and just soaked up as much information as I could. And here's what I've found. According to the book on the stock rings from the factory, the top ring is between 10 and 16 thousandths and the service limit is 18 thousandths. And the second ring is 18 to 25 thousandths with a service limit of 28 thousandths. So I sent a question to Speed Pro, which is the manufacturer of my rings and my pistons, to see what they thought. And they sent me a flyer. According to the flyer, the top ring for moderate performance should be around four thousandths per inch of bore. I had my cylinders bored 20 over, so that brings my new cylinder size to 3.8. So 3.8 times four thousandths, it's basically 15 thousandths. And the second ring should be five thousandths per inch of bore. So 3.8 times five thousandths is 19 thousandths. And for a boosted application, according to the flyer, should be six thousandths per inch of bore for both the top and the bottom rings. So 3.8 times six thousandths is 0 0.0228. And we'll just round that up to 23 thousandths. When I posed the question on summitracing.com, SpeedPro replied to me and they said the top ring should be between nine thousandths and 15 thousandths. And then the second ring should be somewhere between 17 thousandths and 25 thousandths. And then in one of the videos I saw the guy was using a different set of rings. So this might not be applicable, but I was just kind of looking for a range. This guy was using Hastings rings. And according to them, on a stock motor, the top ring should be the bore times 0 0.0065. And the second ring on a stock motor should be the bore times 0 0.0045. But on a boosted application, you're looking at the bore times 0 0.0085 for the top ring and 0.0065 zero zero six five for the bottom ring so based on that information 3.8 times 0 0.0085 brings my top ring to 0 0.0323 and the second ring would be 0 0.0247 or we'll call that 0 0.025 now Richard Holdener one of the other guys that I like to watch he has a ton of information and a ton of experience he's built hundreds of these motors and tested them on the dyno down at West Tech and he says to file these things open to 28 to 30 thousands for a boosted 5.3 for him the basic rule of thumb for boosted application is the 0 0.0065 times the bore which again my bore 3.8 times 0 0.0065 brings me to 0 0.0247 basically 0 0.025. Then you got guys like Sloppy Mechanics who basically just say file them open to 30 thousandths and slop them back in and call it good. So taking in all of this information, I think I'm going to go right around 25 thousandths to 28 thousandths, somewhere in there for both rings. It kind of seems like that's where it wants to be. But wait, what about blow by, you might ask? Well, good question. A lot of these guys say that it doesn't matter until you get ridiculously big in your end gap. 30 thousandths over, and Richard Holdner would say 35 thousandths over, they haven't seen any noticeable effects of blow by. So if I go up to 30 thousandths, somewhere in there with seven to 10 pounds, which let's be honest, I might even go over that. But if I do go over that, do I wanna tear it apart again? File them open even bigger if I really want 12 to 14 pounds of boost? Is it worth it? Or do I wanna stick with 10 pounds of boost and smoke some Mustangs and call it good? So all that being said, let's give this thing a cleaning again because it's been sitting for a few days. And let's just pop these rings in there and just kind of see where they're at already. You'll want to keep wiping it down until you don't see any signs of dirt on your rag. Now we're good. So this is the top ring and there are no markings on this. It'll have a dot or it'll say T or some kind of indicator if these are directional. But since there are no markings on these, these can go either direction. I'm gonna wipe these down with some WD-40 to clean them up just because you never know fresh out of the package, there could be dirt, oil, grease, whatever on there. And you want them to be clean because you just cleaned your cylinder wall. You also want to be really careful with these. Don't twist them or anything like that because they are really kind of brittle so you just kind of want to with two hands gently squeeze them together or pull them apart just slightly because if you break one of these 
you're going to end up buying a whole new set. So very carefully, we'll put this in the number one piston here and just kind of squeeze them together, get one side in, and then you can get the other side in there just like that. And now when you're measuring for end gap, you want to make sure that that ring is exactly square in the bore. And the best way to do that is to get a piston. And I just took this old piston here and put the, the top ring and the second ring into the oil ring slot. And that'll make a perfect ring squaring tool. Just like that. So you can see our ring gap over here. Let's start with a 16. Yeah, 16 goes in. You can feel a little bit of drag. So let's go up to a 17. Yeah, the 17 feels quite a bit tighter. So let's go ahead and check 18. Double check to make sure we're square. So I'm not getting false readings. 18 goes in. Well, let's check the 19. The 19 is pretty tight. It won't go in there. So it's somewhere between 18 and 19. So now we'll take it over to our ring filer here. The main thing you want is you only want to file one side of these rings. You don't want to file both of them because one of them is square. And when these butt together, you want them to be perfectly square. So you don't want to file it at an angle so you have a sharp point on one end and it's uneven in the cylinder bore. You also want to check to make sure that the top of the ring is actually on top when you're filing it. But what I like to do just for consistency's sake is I like to file on the left side and then keep that on the left. That way I know that that side is the top when I put it on the piston, but also when I test it in the cylinder bore. So I'm just looking to make sure it's square on the wheel right there and up against these supports. And once you feel like you got it, just give it some turns towards the center, towards the piston. Another handy trick is you want to count your turns. That way when you measure, you can kind of get a ballpark of say 10 turns is one thou. And you want to kind of feel it and see if there are any burrs because you don't want to scratch your cylinder walls. Well, let's put it in the cylinder, see where we're at. Now 19 goes in pretty easily. So let's check 20 and 20 does not go in. So we're gonna keep going. We'll make sure we're grinding the same side. We wanna just gently sneak up on the number we're going for. Twenty thousand is pretty tight, so we got a ways to go still. Keep grinding, good times. There we go, 26, that's the magic number. Now that we got this one filed down to our preferred size, we're gonna actually deburr it one more time just to make sure that there are no burrs on there that are gonna cause any problems. Again, using our fine file stone, we'll just kind of dress the edges just a little tiny bit. We have this one matched to cylinder number one. You wanna make sure that you don't mix these up. So we're gonna label these with our cylinder numbers and keep them all together. That way we're not accidentally putting cylinder one ring on cylinder two or vice versa. Now we'll move on to our second ring using the same process. Now the second ring does have a dot on it and this dot is gonna indicate which side is the top. So when we're measuring, we wanna make sure that that dot is facing up towards the top of the piston. Once again, just to check it straight out of the box, we'll start with the number 16. That goes in there way too easy. So let's bump it up to 18. 18 is pretty tight. So my guess is that this is the same as the top rings were about 18 thousandths. So once again, we'll file these down to 26 thousandths. Number 20 is tight, okay. Just got a little ways to go. Only three goes in, but it's tight, so a little ways to go. 24, 24 is tight, so we gotta keep going. <sighs> Good time. Okay, 
26 goes in, but it's kind of tight. I can feel it, so we're good. Once again, we'll label this guy and put it with the other one, and then we'll move on to the other cylinders. All right, I got all set of eight rings filed, beveled, deburred, cleaned, and now they're ready to be installed in the pistons. I got the number one piston mounted up in the vise here, and you can see the notch here pointing to the front of the engine. I'm gonna do these all the same, so the front's gonna be to the left. Now, your rings may have come with a clocking position diagram in your instructions, but mine did not, but I did find one in the LS Engine Series book, so you'll want to consult your ring manufacturer, but I'm gonna use the one in the book. So first things first, we'll grab our rings from the number one cylinder. We're gonna start with the oil expander. Depending on the brand you have, some of them will actually overlap and lock in place. This one is a butt together one. If you've got the butt together one, you want this part that's butting together to point towards the top of the piston. So now according to the diagram, these expander retainers will be clocked about the one or two o'clock position. And then the other one's gonna be at about the four or five o'clock position. And then our expander end gap is gonna be right about the three o'clock position. I like to keep these gaps kind of farther apart. So I'm actually gonna go probably at the one o'clock and five o'clock position with the expander at the three o'clock position. We're gonna kind of just lightly lube this guy up with some engine oil on both sides. You do want some lubricity, especially because we're gonna be spinning the crank as we put these rods on the crank. So now we'll do the top container. Once again, we'll get some oil on it. And then again, this is gonna go more in the five o'clock position. And there we go. So we got the bottom one up here about one o'clock or so. The top container is down here in the five o'clock and the end gap is right here at three o'clock. So now we'll do our second ring and the gap on this one is gonna be right down here at the six o'clock position. So once again, we'll lube this up with some oil. This one is directional, so you gotta make sure that you put the dot towards the top of the piston. These are the ones that you wanna use your ring spreader tool. I don't have one of those, so what I'm gonna do is just grab the end with my thumb and my finger right here. Just kind of spread it apart. Just enough to get it into that second position. The ring, not my gloves. Let go. There we go. Okay. Second position. Six o'clock. The top ring, remember the end gap is gonna be up here at the noon position. Once again, lube it up. And this one does not have a dot on it, but I remember when I filed it, I filed one side and that side was always on my left when it's facing up. So I'm just gonna install it the same way I put it when I measured. And there we go. Rings are installed on piston number one. Let's repeat that seven more times and then we'll get this in the engine block. But that's gonna have to wait for another episode. Thanks for watching. If this helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, comment, share with your friends. Get yourself a t-shirt over in the link here or link down in the description. Check out the socials and I'll see you on the next one.